inhalation, you also destroy the lungs. I mean, you're trying to help them, but that positive pressure destroys the lungs. And the younger they are, the more fragile their lungs and the more the lung tissue gets destroyed. So as they become term, you know, so they're there like 25 weeks, by 30 weeks, 35 weeks, if they're still requiring oxygen after 36 weeks, um, they're, they'll require oxygen after 36 weeks and their CO2s will be typically like a COPD patient where they'll always be high. Like a typical COPD patient with a high CO2, low O2 with adults, it looks just like that for neonates that have been on the ventilator for a long time and their lungs got destroyed. They'll have COPD-like blood gases too. So they'll have a 735 pH, but their CO2s will be like 60, 65, O2s will be low. So that's damage from um, positive pressure ventilation and the oxygen, uh, increased FiO2s. So that's what the slides say. Um, and then it, in the years before surfactant was available, there was a typical pattern of how the lungs would get destroyed and that turned into bronchopulmonary dysplasia. But now with surfactant being given and it's not as severe as it used to be, um, the textbooks come up with this neonatal chronic lung disease name, but yet when you're working in the NICU, BPD is still referred to. So it's pretty much, um, you know, the lungs have been damaged, you've got COPD type blood gases, Babies are on oxygen, even at 36 weeks of their gestational age. Um, they still call them BPD babies. But when you're reading in the textbook, they call it neonatal chronic lung disease. So premature neonates are subject to having underdeveloped lungs along with low surfactant production. They often require prolonged mechanical ventilation which leads to inflammation of the lungs from the positive pressure, and then you get scarring of the lung tissue. Um, so BPD is chronic lung injury in premature infants who survived RDS after treatment, um, but they needed mechanical ventilation and oxygen. The more premature, the greater the inf incidence. So 30% of preemies less than 28 weeks of gestation will have BPD. And 3% of infants born after 28 weeks will end up with BPD. Although BPD is not as severe as it was before the days of surfactant, the term is still used. Other terms include new BPD or neonatal chronic lung disease. So the chest x-ray will reveal a hazy or a hyperinflated appearance. Um, it will occasionally show cystic emphysema. All right, so the hyperinflated appearance comes from destruction of the tissue that's supporting the airways. Um, so the airways are going to collapse on these babies when they try to exhale. So they're going to be trapping air. Again, just like our adult COPD patients, um, they're going to trap air. And because they're trapping air, when you look at an x-ray of them, their diaphragms are going to be flattened from all this trapped air pushing against the diaphragm. Um, so they'll have trapped air. So that's the hyperinflated appearance. Um, cystic emphysema. Now we're looking for a little black circles. Can you tell? The little cystic areas of, of destroyed tissue. So you can see it in the x-ray. So cystic would be like circular shape and loss of lung tissue would be the emphysema. Any questions on that? For some reason, they test really heavily on x-rays when you're taking your neonatal specialty exam, which you can take as soon as you graduate. Like once you graduate, you graduate in May. Um, Probably two to three weeks later, you'll have taken your written um, exam and your clinical sim exam and you'll be registered. 
If you're motivated, you can turn right around, study for your um, neonatal pediatric specialty certification, and then have that done too. So you don't have to have a, a year of working in order to take the exam, like you do with the neonatal pediatric specialty. So if you plan on working in those areas, it's good to get it done right away. It looks really good when you're interviewing for a position in the NICU. Um, but anyway, the students come back and they tell me, oh, boy, do they hit those x-rays hard? So that's just feedback from students that have taken the exam. Um, so bronchopulmonary dysplasia is abnormal development of lung tissue, and it's caused by inflammation and scarring of the lungs. The end result is a low ventilation to perfusion ratio. The ABGs become like a COPD patient with a compensated respiratory acidosis. A neonate is diagnosed with BPD if he or she needs oxygen therapy and continues to show signs of respiratory distress after 36 weeks of gestational age. So that's the cutoff point, because by 36 weeks of gestational age, if they were born at like 25 or 28 weeks, um, and what is that, almost 10 weeks later, they still need oxygen. They're still having signs of distress. They, their lungs tissue is damaged. Um, other diagnosing factors include the chest x-ray. What will that look like? Um, hazy, hazy, hazy hyperinflated, and cystic. And cystic. <laughs> um, they'll have a history of prematurity, and they'll have a history of being on the ventilator for a while. So that's what you need to know for diagnosing BPD. There is no definitive treatment for BPD. Um, therefore, it's just best to manage and work with what you've got. Um, so you monitor the infant closely with vital signs, blood gases, um, give them good nutrition. You prevent barotrauma, value trauma by monitoring the tidal volumes and the peak pressures on the ventilator. And you prevent oxidative damage to the lung tissue by keeping the FiO2s as low as possible. Seems like just gentle therapy would be another word to replace all of this. <laughs> you just keep in mind to use low pressures. And, um, you just don't use a whole bunch of FiO2, but just inch it up slightly just to keep the O2 sats in range. And that's it. Question? Um, do the kids have long term? How does it affect them long term? Um, they can completely recover and have no need for anything when they're like two to three years old. Um, Joe DiMaggio has a party and they invite the kids back, you know, for their, I think their one year birthday or their two year birthday. Um, so Ralph tells me that, yeah, they're just bouncing around like just normal kids. I guess it feels good to know that no matter what, how badly their lungs are, you know, at the age of three months, that they can recover from it because the lung tissue keeps growing. So I guess they kind of grow out of their bad lungs. Because oh, okay. I do know someone that had a baby that, that had this, and he still suffers. Really? Yeah, he, he can't, you know, getting sick or anything just immediately has to go into PCing and everything. So. Wow. And how old is your friend's baby? Uh, about seven. Seven years old? Yeah. <gasps> That's why I didn't know if it led to something else or what, but she still says that's what he has, so. Oh my god. Yeah. So he's got yeah. like needing um, bronchodilators yes. all the time, mm -hmm. steroids. Yeah. At oh, seven wow. years of age. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I don't curious. think he's going to grow out of it. <laughs> That's why I was curious if it, it is what is the normal. Really yeah. So, I mean, Aww. Yeah. Can he play normally or he's really short of breath? Yeah, or? yeah, but I mean, very, she's very careful. He can play normally, but I mean, 
just extreme caution when it comes to being